Welcome to lesson four. Lesson four, we're going to cover uh, learning a little bit about file organization, creating links to images on the web, creating hyperlinks to other web pages, and uh, creating several pages so that you can link them all together, creating a website. So let's get started. I'm going to start with file organization because I think this is one of the most important parts of, of web design once we start using images and we start creating multiple pages and linking them together. So, file organization. I'm going to go to my CSI 1020 folder here. And in here right now I've got my doc type template that I've been going back to all the time to create new pages. And I've got three different pictures here. Okay. I'm going to go to Notepad++. Whoops and I'm going to open my blank doc type template and I'm going to resave it save it as a different name so we don't save over the doc type template file save as I'm going to call this image practice and then I have to choose my correct file extension You've got to choose HTML for hypertext markup language. If you don't do this, once again, things won't save properly. You'll just save a text file. So save it. Okay. Now, I'm going to go to this folder again. Every time I make a new website, I always make a new folder that's going to hold all the resources for that website. Okay? To do that, you right-click in the Explorer window here go down to new choose folder and then you name it I'm calling it images practice and I'm going to drag all my resources in there that I need I need my images practice HTML I need the three images that I'm going to use okay and now I'll explain why we do this in a little bit but just know, every time you make a new website or even a new web page, create a new folder that's going to hold all of the resources for that page. Okay? Now, let's move on. I want to talk about... I want to talk about uh, creating images and putting them on the web. Okay? To do that, we need to use the image element. It looks a little something like this. Okay? This is the image element. You might notice that it doesn't have an opening tag or a closing tag. It just has this one instance. We call this an empty tag. Okay? An empty tag, you've seen them before. You've seen the horizontal rule. Okay? and you've seen the page break. All right. All three of these, when you use them in HTML, something happens at the location where you place that tag in the markup. Okay, so wherever I place the HR, a horizontal rule will appear. Wherever I place the IMG, an image will appear. Wherever I place the BR, a page break will appear. Now, image is not going to do anything on its own. I'm going to save this and I'm going to run it in Firefox and you'll see there's not going to be an image that will appear. See? No image. Now, the reason for that is we haven't created a, a link to the actual image. Alright? And we need to do that. To do that we need to use the SRC or source element or attribute. SRC equals, and then I have to have something in here. This is an attribute. An attribute is a piece of code that you put inside of an opening tag or um, inside of an empty tag, and it'll modify that element. When I put the SRC attribute inside of the image tag, 
it will create a reference to a image that is somewhere either on my computer or somewhere on the internet. I'm going to show you how to reference a file that's on your computer, okay? Now, I'm going to go back to my folders here. I'm going to go to image practice where I've got my files saved. I've got three images. One is called 4, one is called gun for hire, and one is called untitled 34. These are just pictures that I got off the internet, okay? And also I have my image practice HTML file sitting right there. I need to reference one of those file names in order for the picture to appear. As you saw, when I don't reference anything, no picture appears. So, I am going to reference this one here. It's a ghost scaring a guy who's got the hat on and he's eating porridge or something like that. This one is called Untitled 34. So, I should just be able to type Untitled 34 in here, right? Untitled 34. And this should work. Huh, well it's not working. Something must be wrong. Let's try and figure out what that is. I'm going to save it. File save as. Make sure it's saving to the right location. It is. Making sure I've got uh, HTML saved here. And I'll replace it. And let's see if that helped. I'll refresh. Still nothing. So something's still wrong. You can't just enter the name, okay? You have to enter everything for that file. You have to have the file extension as well as the name. The name has to be spelled exactly the way you see it in the file. So what I usually do is I right click on the image itself, go to properties, and then I get the file name here and I copy it. And I look for the file extension. This one is a bitmap. So it requires the extension BMP. So I'll go back to my markup, paste in the file name, I had it correct, then I need to have the file extension, .bmp. Save it, and refresh. Hey, there we go. When you reference the file correctly, the proper name and the proper file extension, the image will appear. Now, let's get back to file organization really quickly. If I take this file out, I'm going to cut it and put it in a different folder. I'm going to put it in the folder that's just above the one that we were working with. And I refresh this, it doesn't appear. It's gone. We've created an absolute link. An absolute link means we reference a specific place on the computer. When I enter just the file name, it's going to look for that file in the same folder where my HTML is saved. So it's going to look for it in this folder. If it's not in here, you get a broken link. Okay? So always save your images in the same folder as your HTML and you should have no problems. Save it, refresh it, and my picture should be there. Fair enough? Alright, that's the end of the first part of lesson four.